the music's on, the disco ball has dropped, and it's time to get this party started. You're listening to episode 41 of Disco Trek, a Star Trek Discovery After Party podcast here on the Tricorder Transmissions Network. I'm your host, Heather Barker, and with me, as always, I know him as Jeff Hewlett, but everyone else knows him now as that guy. So <laughs> welcome, that guy, <laughs> Jeff Hewlett. Yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> that's me, all right. Yep. Um, hi. <laughs> How are you, Heather? <laughs> I am podcasting from bed. Everybody can do this. You can you can do it. It's a like I am I am starting a new thing. Uh it's really not. I just yes, I I have issues. Everybody knows that. So um yes. Well, let's get started. For those who aren't familiar with the podcast, we're a community-based Star Trek podcast focusing on each episode of Discovery as they air. Tonight, we're discussing episode 13, which is part one of Such Sweet Sorrow. With us to talk about the episodes are two members of the Star Trek fan community. One of them you have heard all around our network. You've also heard him on Delta Flyer, and he's got a Stargate podcast as well that I can't remember nice. the name of right now. So Thad, hey, remind me what the Stargate podcast is called. It's uh, real simple. It's Stargate Weekly. Stargate oh, wow. Weekly. Nice. I was just like in my head, I can see the logo for it, <laughs> but I'm not visualizing all the words. So it's a weekly Stargate podcast then. Well, I drew that logo. So, you know, Ooh. awesome that you remember that. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's we were actually not living up to our name at the moment. Both of the podcasts are on hiatus. So my co-host is dealing with some life situation things, but we will be back soon. Well, we look forward to it. Our other friend is Belinda. Belinda, it's great to have you on the show for the first time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself since you're new? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so I got into Star Trek when I was uh, when I came here when I was nine, and it, Voyager, I believe, was playing on UPN a lot uh, reruns. And around that time, that was when Enterprise had started airing. So um, Enterprise was kind of my first official show that I started watching. And, and so that's kind of where my uh, Star Trek fandom started. And then I watched all the other older shows that I could get my hands on. And it's all sort of a blur, <laughs> one giant blur of Star Trek. So I've seen everything, but I can't remember everything. I'm kind of like that, uh, that Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, where he's like, I have no memory of this place, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of where I am. I'm like, I know everything, but I also don't know everything because I can't remember them. They're all just one giant blurry thing. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Right, I've watched here. all this series like multiple, multiple times, and there are still episodes that I just don't remember at all. If somebody yeah. asks about an obscure <laughs> character, I'm just like, oops, what? Um, yeah, I'm nope. hoping I'm hoping that I, at some point um, I will be able to, I'm actually hoping to try and do like a rewatch marathon so that now I'm older, I can actually kind of take in more of the things mm. that I was enjoying before. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. There's a lot of fun in doing rewatches. And like every time I do a rewatch, I still find new things or just revisit things that resonate super strongly. Um, and I think there's a lot of concern with fans over, you know, what kind of a fan am I if I've only seen everything once and I can't remember things. And I think it's just important to stress that there are fans who have been around since TOS that also don't remember all of everything <laughs> or that haven't seen all of Star Trek and you are still a super awesome fan. Um, so if Enterprise, did you watch Enterprise as it aired? Yeah, I did. Um, I watched that. I think it aired around when I was probably about nine or 10. Okay. So um, that was very much like my Trek show. Yeah. Um, even though I had watched a lot of Voyager beforehand, but it was just like, that was kind of my thing. And yeah. I just really love that story. And also because I, I think it resonated me in a way because I was an immigrant and it was oh, kind of like wow. my first time in this country. 
And so with Enterprise, it was like their first time in space. So I was yeah. like, oh, it kind of like I understood that feeling of just kind of bumbling your way around the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I that love that. That reminds me of Marina's story. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's just like, I mean, Enterprise was my first Trek 2 that I watched live, but I it didn't resonate with me for some reason, and I ended up bowing out, I think, around the third season or somewhere in there. So for me, like, Star Trek Discovery is that show for me, where it's like, I have personal life experience that resonates with the show, and so I'm connecting that way. So super, super cool. I'm glad that you when like enterprise was the gateway drug for your star trek addiction and uh i'm glad that you went and immersed yourself and now here you are full-blooded trekkie ready <laughs> to talk about discovery <laughs> Definitely. all right well we're gonna hop into our discussion here in just a second but first we have some housekeeping um as we've talked about before we've changed the way that the show is functioning now and although we are definitely still community focused and want to give fans the, the oh, what's the word? We want to give fans the opportunity to talk about discovery. Um, what you're going to do now is follow us on Twitter. It's at disco underscore Trek. You can find us on Facebook at Disco Trek. Um, and then you can join the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas convention group. Uh, once you've done all that, you will see new posts with Disco Trek information um, for recording time and dates and a link to a contact form. So don't comment, don't reply, go directly to the form and that's where you will submit your name and we will pick two random winners, usually on Friday and then we record on Sunday. So we watch Discovery on Thursday, we pick our winners on Friday, we record on Sunday and I was going to say we do it all over again, but we've only got one week left. <laughs> oh. ah. Okay. Well, we also have a Patreon and we have a new patron. So Jeff, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Of course. So you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Tricorder Transmissions or by visiting our website, the Tricorder Transmissions.com and clicking on the Patreon link in the upper right hand corner. So if you enjoy what we do here on Disco Trek or any of our other Tricorder Transmission shows, of which there are many, and a new one coming out very, very soon. So keep your eyes out for Faraday, uh, our tabletop gaming show. It's going to be debuting pretty soon. Um, so can, please consider joining our Patreon family. Uh, when you join, you'll immediately get access to unedited episodes and uh, extended release episodes that come out often quite a while before the episodes themselves launch, usually days or sometimes even longer than that. And you get a lot of bonus material. We have a cool Patreon pin that we'll send you when you join up. And we have a lot of new stuff with our new tiers that we have launched that you can take a look at when you go over to the page and see all the benefits. Um, there's lots and lots of stuff, so tons of content. And we do have one new patron. That is Benjamin Kaiser. Thank you for joining our Patreon family. Yes, thank you, Ben. He is a friend on Twitter. Um, he is Yaya -ya Mink, so Y-A-Y-A-M-E-E-N-K. <laughs> Go follow him. Make a new Star Trek friend. Welcome him to our Patreon family. Yes. Ask him about Tricorder Tribe and how awesome it is. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but thank you, Ben, so much for joining our family. And um, we appreciate everybody. It doesn't matter whether it's a dollar or $25 or even more. That would be amazing. But you help make this network function and you help us throw really fun parties at stlv which we will be planning very soon but first we've got to talk about this episode so number one spoiler alert why are you here if you have not seen the episode i really hope you have then you can stay but if you haven't go watch it and come back because we're just going to spoil the ship out of it haha ha, i made a joke <laughs> it was i know it's terrible guys it was so lame um all right our show is a general discussion about the episode segmented into three parts. First, we're going to drop the record, which is where we'll talk about our opening remarks and reactions. Next, we play a new track where we explore what we learn that's new about the Star Trek universe and spin it again as our look back at standout moments, scenes, themes, characters, anything you feel is worth a little extra attention. Um, this episode 
I say every week, like they had it all. Like, I don't know how they continue to do so much in less than an hour. I wish it was often more than an hour. Um, however, I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to let you guys, you guys go. So Thad, take it away. What did you think about the first part here of Such Sweet Sorrow? I loved it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just like uh, what I thought last week was amazing, and then I I wasn't I didn't think that this week would top last week, but then it did, which has been a common refrain for me this season. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just so much of this episode was great, and the nostalgia of all the stuff on the Enterprise just blew me away. Oh man, I. I feel like this is a moment that a lot of people have been waiting for um, since we saw the Enterprise show up last season. So I don't know. What what did it feel like uh, walking onto the Enterprise with the show? Oh, man. Just the second that door opened and you heard that swish noise from TOS, <laughs> and then you see the the orange grating things in the hallways, and it's just like, this is the Enterprise. <laughs> Belinda, I have to know from you then, how did you feel stepping onto the Enterprise and how did you feel about this episode? Um, I have loved every episode of Discovery this season and I love this episode as well. And stepping onto Enterprise, <laughs> I, I think I might have cried. <laughs> um <laughs> And and I think mostly I was crying at the fact that they have handrails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I've been I, I've been sort of screaming the entire season, why does Discovery not have handrails? Because <laughs> poor Captain Pike is just flailing himself all over the place. You know, I, I'm surprised that he's not got like knee injuries at this point. So I kept saying, you know, why don't they just have handrails for him to hold on to? <laughs> and I'm so glad that at least one ship has handrails. Maybe they just do it for the Constitution class. I don't know. But I, I was so happy seeing handrails and just actual safety standards on a starship <laughs> that I, I think that kind of eclipsed everything else. But I also just, it, it, I love the way everything looks. It's yeah. It's very distinctly enterprise, but mm -hmm. with a much better look that doesn't kind of look like a uh, cardboard box. <laughs> yeah, and jelly buttons like they still kept yes! the jelly buttons. Yeah, that was great. And, and they uh, had the little handles in the turbo lift. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Jeff, Which, if I'm honest. About I might not have ever noticed on TOS, but remember from DS9. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, what did you think about such sweet sorrow? Hmm. Am I that guy again? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm a little middle of the road on this one. Um, solid performances as usual, though. So many great scenes, so well acted. Um, I thought the visual design, uh, like, Belinda and Thad were both saying, and you yourself, Heather, were saying, the visual design of the the Enterprise, um, especially the bridge, uh, I thought that was great. I thought that it was a very tasteful update of the classic set, and not didn't go too far out of the way with it. They you know kind of kept. The, I, I like the addition of the colors; they were pretty really nice. Um, great special effects, really all around in this episode. Uh, the time travel stuff feels like it's getting a bit convoluted. Um, so I'm trying to keep track of all the things that are going on. I think the fast pacing uh, made some of the things a little bit more difficult to understand. Uh, you know, with only one watch. Uh, you know, so the... what are you confused about? Like, let's go for it. Let's jump in. Let's try to figure it well, out together. I thought the time frame for building the second time suit seemed a little short. Um, to kind of pull that together so quickly uh, it seemed like they. they could have been something they could have started on like in the last episode and, you know, just had it working on the background and not, you know, make it this, you know, have to get this thing done in under an hour kind of thing. But, um, but you know, the one thing that really stood out to me uh, in, over the last, course of the last couple of episodes, this really feels like it's a lot of setup for season three. Um, it looks like um, 
Oh, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about this in the episode, but it looks to me like they're going kind of the Voyager route, but you know, through time as opposed to distance, uh, being far from home. Um, could be an interesting direction to see what the future is like that far ahead and how Discovery can survive out there uh, with no backup, you know. Well, Starfleet probably will still be around, but um, it could be interesting to see. It's so funny that you refer to it as like a setup for season three, whereas I'm not even thinking about season three yet. <laughs> I'm just like focused on how are we going to wrap all of this up and close this out. I don't um, think they're going to. Well, I and I just don't know. Like, I started wondering the past couple episodes, like, what part is Michael Burnham going to play in a in season three when she's been so central to this storyline the whole season? Um, and and now it's starting to make sense. I had some conversations uh, earlier in the week about theories of what might happen, and one of those was you know jumping into the future. Uh, and and there and it it sort of looked like if if the ship does jump into the future with Michael it still has like the core discovery crew um so I, I I'm really on board with that like I none of it really not that it doesn't make sense to me I think that what it is is I'm really excited that I don't know where we're going like I I don't see all of the answers laid out in front of me for the finale so it just makes me incredibly excited just to have that you know instead of like I felt you know last season so so much of everything got spoiled and even though we didn't know everything that was going to happen in the finale um, the finale for me last season wound up being a little lackluster whereas I'm already blown away by the first part of this finale that I can't even wait to see what's going to happen uh, next week. I don't know. I just, this episode really blew me away. And I'm just, I've kind of thrown out my critical eye <laughs> because I feel like That's okay. it's so I, many I picked respects. it up, put it in. <laughs> yeah well in so many respects for me like I just find that if if I'm looking at things too critically I really stop enjoying so much of what I generally do find enjoying if that enjoyable if that makes sense mm -hmm. um that's probably my so, problem <laughs> yeah like I just I don't like I don't care how the time crystal stuff is gonna make sense and I don't care if it's scientifically perfect because I have just had so much fun, especially the second half of the season. I mean, I think largely the season as a whole, I have enjoyed more than last season. Um, but it has just this this last half has just been like one big roller coaster ride, and I feel like they're gonna hit it out of the park in the next episode. But I don't. Then I'm like, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Any any final thoughts before we move into play a new track? Did anybody want to add anything to what Jeff said or what I said? Um, I I just I feel like I I really like the way this crew is coming together, and mm -hmm. they're they're really kind of ride or die at this point. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they're like they're they're gonna go for it, and they're gonna go for it together. And I just I really like the way this crew is really coming together um, even more than they were at the end of last season. Yeah. And I feel like that has been in part because of Pike and just his, um, his sort of way of leadership and commanding, I think, has really kind of given this crew a room for them to really flourish and sort of be this family that they never really got to be when they were under Lorca. So it yeah. was just, it was really nice, I think, to see them all together and sort of going to bat for each other and ready to fight for each other and have it be like, you know, they're all willing to kind of speak up and make their voices heard, which wasn't really the case last season because Lorca was kind of like, it's my way or the highway. Mm, and yeah. Good point. 
and, and Pike is just, he's not like that at all. He's this very sort of patient person who opens up the room. He makes sure everyone is included. And he's kind of the, the leader and the sort of teacher that you want to have. Mm-hmm. And, and I also feel like this episode was almost like uh, he's watching sort of the kids leave the nest. <laughs> he's like this papa bird who is watching his little you know birds fly off and sort of go off on this big adventure and it was just um and I also cried because I want to keep Anson Mount forever <laughs> yes. well you can sign the petition right there's a petition <laughs> with like 800,000 signatures I don't know how many are on there but like there is a petition I think yeah, there's one going around uh, to get him his new show. I think he was just on the panel at, what What was it, Fad? Is it Philadelphia Comic Con? Yes. Okay. Um, and our friend I sadly Andy... did not get to see his panel. Oh, well, it was today, right? Yeah, um, and I, I was just there on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, so I, our friend Annie Muirhead was tweeting um, uh, his panel and a lot of what he was saying and you know, it seems pretty finite from what he's saying, what Ethan Peck is saying, um, that that there's nothing else planned. However, the way that they're saying it is also not <laughs> so definitive that it um, rules out the possibility of something happening. Um, <laughs> I I'm in a weird place because I have really enjoyed having Anson Mount and having Captain Pike. And I think that it is extremely important for us to see leaders like that because, you know, leaders like that exist in in everyday life. And it takes that measure of respect, uh, communication, uh, humility, and everything else that, that a leader like Pike has to bring that family together. Like you said, Belinda, um, and that's really, really important. But for me, I just, I'm, I worry now, like, do people want a Pike show more than they even want Discovery? <laughs> like, it, it feels like Star Trek Discovery this season has largely been the Pike show. And I'm okay with that in the way that the character has served the show. Um, but I also feel like, the amount of time spent on him and Spock and everything else could have also better served like more of the bridge crew or just more of the, the, the character so that when we get something like, like the goodbye letters, which I loved that scene. Like I that scene was so good. Yeah. I have no issues with that because for me, like I feel, do I feel like I'm best friends with all these characters? No. Do I feel like I know, you know, Detmer and Owashakan and um, everyone else like the same as, you know, Tilly and Burnham, no. But I, I do feel like I've learned enough. And let me tell you how excited I was. I don't know if Detmer has a girlfriend. If Taz, like Tazzy could be a name for any person, but I am secretly hoping she's queer. <laughs> like, she ended it by saying, you're my best friend. So I know, but I mean, my partner is my way. best friend. Like, yeah, my partner is my best friend. So right. even though it said that, like, I don't know. I, I'm still secretly hoping uh, for that just because, I don't know, it makes me happy. Um, but I think for some people it would have worked better and like with Arium and that whole discussion, like it would have worked better to have maybe spent more time focused on those characters instead of being somewhere else. Um, So it's tough. Like, is I, I do, I would, Anson Mount has been great. Ethan Peck has been great. We didn't get enough of number one and Rebecca Romaine. Um, And I, I think that a Pike show will be super successful it just for me has felt a little raw because I, I, the hype for Pike almost feels like it's taken away any hype for Discovery itself. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, uh, I definitely really understand that. Um, but I, I think one of the things that I felt about this season was that it's because of sort of this character that they brought in uh, with Pike that they were able to kind of open up the stories to allow other characters to 
have sort of their moments in the sun. So I, yeah. I almost feel like uh, Pike's presence has helped um, the show to be more than just sort of centering on a few characters, which kind of was the way season one was. Yeah. Um, and that his presence has allowed other characters to sort of come to the forefront because he's not like Lorca, who is like so dominating of a presence that kind of everything else shrinks away. Yeah. So I, I feel like, yeah, on one hand, I definitely understand that you don't want him to overtake the show, but I also feel like a lot of the positives that we've had this season about being a more ensemble story and having sort of views of these bridge crew, um, it all comes from the fact that Pike's presence is there and he is that sort of captain. And, and I feel like um, what they've been able to do this season with, with Pike and with Spock is that they, they've used their presence to really um, bring out more of the stories of other characters. So as, as much as I think it was also uh, slightly their story, um, they were able to bring out sort of things in other characters like with, with uh, Spock and Michael and you kind of see more of her story and her emotions and sort of her being this big sister, which is sort of kind of not the thing that we've really gotten to see from her. Yeah. And I think uh, with Pike, and I think it's it's another thing that kind of um, I always felt like it brought to Michael's story where, um, you know, she's been sort of this lost wondering soul for so long because of what she felt on uh, losing uh, the prime Giorgio and she's and then having to deal with uh, all the mess with Lorca she's kind of not felt very steady and I felt like with Pike being there he provided this sort of safe haven and sort of this foundation that she can use to kind of almost feel like this was her redemption story that you know yeah. she had somebody to uh sort of stand up for her and so that she could kind of have the confidence to go out and do all sorts of things uh, because she has somebody sort of watching her back. So I always felt like uh, Pike and Spock sort of um, helped allowing other characters to go forward. Yeah, I definitely think that, that their presence has helped the show. Um, I, I think it's part of why this season has just been so phenomenal. And I mean, I, you know, ask me about number one, like, hell yes, did I, did I love the still small amount of time we had with number one? Um, I would have liked to have had more, but, and if it had been the number one show, I mean, I'm sure I would be here like, yes. I mean, I, in fact, I kind of just want like a number one is captain show for me. Like, <laughs> I, yes, um, I would be I, all over that. That would Yeah. Be I, it's like I I feel like they have certainly done so much justice to a character that was problematic in the past, um, and that goes for the writers and the actors, you know, and Anson Mount and the makeup, you know, everything involved in bringing this character to the forefront and doing what they did was successful. And I think also having this Enterprise crew and and pike and spock have helped kind of anchor the series in the timeline it was supposed to be in um however like if we're gonna go so far into the future that we're you know post voyager where everybody wanted a new star trek show to be like i'm so down for that like it kind of blew my mind that if they did this and they start this show in a place where, you know, everybody complained or not everybody, but there was a lot of pushback <laughs> because we didn't want another, you know, prequel or, you know, pre TOS, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that happened. And now some of the same people that were so upset about that are championing for a Pike show, you know, so they did something right there. Um, but if they're able to pull this rabbit out of their hat and go from, you know, pre TOS to post nemesis or something like I just, I'm so excited for that. And I don't know, like, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, but based on everything that is, ha I don't know. I'm just really excited. That's it. I'll <laughs> shut up now. 
um, <laughs> we, we can move over into play a new track. Um, and I'm just going to stick with you, Belinda. Was there anything in this episode that you learned new about Discovery, about any of the characters, about the Star Trek universe? Um, so Pike knows about the Mirror Universe. Yes. And okay. <laughs> at that little wink at George O. And, and by the way, um, I, Michelle Yeoh and Anson Mount's chemistry is just like, they're so good together. Yes. That I would almost hope that uh, it, whenever they get that Section 31 show off the ground, that maybe we'll see Pike in there just to kind of like... <laughs> Why that foil because maybe we don't need a pike show you can just stick him into section 31 and they can just kind of yell at each other or something so let me ask so what did you take from that wink like uh, yeah well, what did I, you take from it i i feel i feel like i i don't know if he's always known um but I feel like because episodes ago he um, had told Michael that like there's something wrong with Giorgio that he knows it because she's not the woman that he knew before. Right, right. Um, and then he had that conversation with Michael like, hey, you know, we gotta, you gotta tell me what's going on. And then Michael said that, yeah, uh, it's just not the good time right now, but we'll have that conversation. So we never saw that conversation. And I've been wondering all season, like, did they ever have that talk or did they not have that talk? So I don't know if that wink was because they'd already had the talk off screen and he knew, or if he always just had a suspicion that something wasn't right and that her announcing that she's Terran from the Mirror Universe merely confirmed his suspicions. I really enjoyed how much Giorgio got shut down in this episode. <laughs> yeah, um, from Bo as well. She's like, I she mean, yeah. A 17-year-old. That, like, Poe shut her down. Michael finally stood up to her and shut her down. And then you have her trying to do this big reveal to Pike, and Pike's just like, yeah, yeah, I, I know. Like, it was, to me, it was one of those, like, playful things where you're like, oh, yeah, you know, forget what I said about that when you divulge something, and they're just like, you said what? Like, you know. Uh, to, to me there was nothing really beyond it being a playful moment I don't know Thad did you take anything different from that scene that wink sorry I was finding the mute button uh, <laughs> I I didn't like that that scene was there I I don't know it felt weird to me that Giorgio would say that it was like I kind of agree. It was kind of a weird, cause and the, my thing is like the fact that she said, "I'm from your your I'm I'm a Terran from your mirror universe." That which, was kind of weird to say too. Which we had that same we had that problem a few weeks ago when she was talking to Doctor Burnham and she said, "You must be thinking of my prime counterpart." And like to her, would she really think of her as her prime counterpart? Yeah, it. I was like, I, I thought the wink was odd. super. It's like the the wink was playful for me, and I thought like I was fine with that. It was just like when I went back and paid extra attention to it, I was more thrown off by just the wording, and it could have just been like weird wording, um, because what you know, what else would that be? But to be like, I'm Taryn from your mirror, you for, and it's just like, well. So this is her, I mean, this would be her prime, you know, it's just, it's a weird wording. I don't know. Jeff, what about you? <laughs> Did you take anything different from the wink? No, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat with, with uh, that on that one. I, um, I don't know. It seemed a little awkward to me. I, <clears throat> I did get a laugh out of the wink, but, um, yeah, the wink was good. I just kind of, I yeah. like, I kind of like the fact that Pike knows stuff, you know, and yeah. he's, like just a little acknowledgement, but I agree. The wording was the dialogue was just a little bit awkward in that scene. I, I was kind of chalking that up to, you know, Georgiou has had some awkward dialogue in past episodes too. So I was just kind of chalking up to that's, that's the way her character is written. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, Belinda, any, any other new things? No, uh, not, there we are. That I, okay. not that Sorry. I can think of. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Thad, then what about you? 
Uh, so new things. Uh, we learned that time crystals can be recharged, apparently. <laughs> so that's supercharged. That was, yeah. Um, we learned that they can block the emissions from the time crystals. I don't think we had seen that before. So that I, the people don't have visions when they're working with them. Yeah. Had we, I'm going to go out, I'm going to mention one of mine, but just because it's a question. Have we seen the the ship to ship evacuation corridors no. in other ships? That okay. was new. I, as far as I know, I don't think we'd ever seen that before. Yeah, not like, to that specific style, I don't recall that kind of like that little weird ladder thing. Yeah. Like I thought, the, we had like the docking things on Enterprise because right. ships would dock and then they would walk but it didn't have like the long they then the ships would be right next to each other these they had the uh, lots of space between them and had the long corridors yeah, i think that was brand new yeah i just thought that was the coolest thing like mm -hmm. i don't know this uh, this the whole episode was just really <laughs> beautifully done i mean frankly <laughs> like all of discovery has just been really beautifully done um, and again, this was another episode that for me felt like I was watching a movie, uh, oh, just a really good movie. <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, that, that scene happened. And even the second time I watched this, I was like live tweeting and screenshotting and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is the neatest thing. I just, I love when we get these fun new technological advances because we can now, you know, like. It seems very sufficient. Like, it, it seems very, like, efficient to move mass amounts of people that way. Yeah, I was wondering how Whereas, they were going like, to do that. Whereas, like, before is like, well, how are you going to fit, like, one person at a time? <laughs> and now it's yeah. like a whole bunch of people can sort of go all at once. Yeah, your shuttlecraft yeah. clown car. You <laughs> stuff everybody in shuttlecrafts. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> all right jeff well what about you did you find any new stuff in this episode well this first one is going to make me sound like a an idiot because i'm sure no. <laughs> tons of people noticed this in previous episodes but this was the first time i actually noticed it how much longer discovery is and larger than the enterprise it seemed like yes yeah, seriously i was like i didn't think i mean I, we've seen them on screen before but i didn't notice that size differential uh, so much until this episode where you actually see them uh, side by side like that. I, I just, I just, I guess I didn't expect the Enterprise to be like kind of almost dwarfed by Discovery. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, oh, um, I had seen the specs, but yeah, no, I don't think we saw a, pic a shot quite like this where they're next to each other like that. Yeah, it seemed dramatic the difference to me um, between them. Um, oh, we got we got final confirmation that uh, there are no holographic communications on the Enterprise ever. <laughs> it's totally broken. Not even try to fix it. <laughs> That's it. Done. <laughs> so I like how they explain that away. Um, have they done... Uh, and here's my uh, my, my lack of, of uh, Trek knowledge and memory of older Trek episodes, but have they ever done one of those pose salute kind of things before to send someone off? You know, where all, they all stand up and do the, the cross hands behind their backs kind of thing? Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to think back. I mean, I know we've seen that pose before, but I, I don't know if I've ever, I remember it being like a kind of a send off kind of thing. I think that was the pose that they had in Redemption Part One when Worf left the Enterprise. Uh, okay. Mm. Well, there we go. Someone with, with deeper Trek knowledge and memory. I will just, <laughs> I'll true. send that out there to Alex Perry. And Alex can, since he is the guru and has all the canon connections, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that he, he may know i um so you know there was so much speculation that the the red angel was burnham and then we get oh it's burnham's mom but then now we have a confirmation that it's still burnham in the suit sending the signals which i thought played in really well like i was really excited that like future burnham was still a thing but not the entire like i didn't want her to just totally be the red angel um <clears throat> so i thought it was cool that even though her mom was the first one she winds up being the second one and again i'm just really curious how this is all going to come together for this finale um but yeah 
I'm trying to find other new stuff and I'm just totally distracted by the amazing people like Queen Poe and the most terrible scene between Stamets and Colbert. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which I knew we were going to get to that at some point. Yeah, well, I don't know. Let's just get to it now. Why the heck not? I um I I am still waiting. And maybe this is just going to continue to play out into season three, this big epic, epic arc that we've been promised. So, th- so this is a place for me where I wish there had been less of the Pike Spock so that we could get more of Culber Stamets because we've definitely gotten, I think, a much more of Culber's healing process lately then Stamets, um, you know, Stamets has kind of withdrawn and, and made the decision that this is not for me anymore. And I need a break for all of this, but we don't get to see like how he got there. Um, and like, if this is the last that we're going to get for this season, I'm going to be really upset <laughs> because I just, it, it, this whole, the whole thing their relationship has been so difficult, you know, to, to defend, to, you know, recognize, you know, how it does affect the LGBTQ community um, with some of the stuff we've talked about in the past. And like, I really, I'm really waiting for something bigger to happen with these two. And I don't even know if, if Culver's gonna be on discovery when they jump, I don't know what's gonna happen and my heart is broken. I think he'll be with them. Somehow so. they're they're going to do something to put him on that ship because they can't get rid of Wilson Cruz twice. <laughs> no. No. That I mean I it it just worries me because like I you know I've I've said all along like on one hand I do it, it does play into this trope on the other hand I really want to trust the actors and the writers and what they're telling us. And so I have trusted and I'm there, but I'm still like, I'm still at a point where I'm really struggling. And then especially when they have another character who now we know, um, you know, I, as a lesbian, we assume she's a lesbian. She could be bisexual, but since Tig is a lesbian, I'm going to assume that Reno is a lesbian. Her wife has already died and now she's putting herself at risk to do something and it's just really frustrating that they put all of the all the queer characters in these situations. Um, so I I hope that something different happens. Like I don't know if Tignataro is going to be around for season three. I think a lot of people want her to be, and I would love love for her to be. I don't want to see her die, but I'm a little worried with this red wedding vision that we're getting. Game of Thrones reference, people. Um, <laughs> Yes, that that something bad is going to happen. And that just really, it just makes me feel uncomfortable as a queer person because like I've really put my faith in hoping for this super awesome, amazing story with Culver and Stamets. And then we're like in this weird place. Again, I'm being there for the ride. It's just a little bit of a difficult thing, um, especially since Culver really seemed to want to find a a better ground like I I got the impression that he wanted to maybe try again with Stamets and then Stamets sort of shut him down and so he just kind of went on that forward motion path and and let that go I don't know did did that did you feel like maybe Colber was on the path towards reconciliation ah I'm not sure. It's been their their relationship has been interesting this season. Yeah, I couldn't tell uh, whether Colbert had or not because uh, it, it, certainly in previous episodes it had seemed as though Colbert w- more or less wanted a clean break. But then we had the scene with Colbert and and uh, Reno the other week, and yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, I Jeff, what was. about you? Oh, I, I think he was, but they used the um, one of the old methods of of uh, not letting somebody get to say what they wanted to say by saying, oh, no, you go first. And I bet he regretted that afterwards because he, he had a big smile on his face and he seemed to have a, a you know, a reconciliatory 
tone and approach when he came up to Stamets there. And I thought he was getting ready to blurt out something, you know, positive about, you know, maybe start restarting things or rekindling things or trying again. And, um, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> he let Stamets go first. And uh, Stamets was on a different path. I think if if Culber had gone first, I think Stamets may have changed his mind. These guys, I just... Oh, <laughs> oh. They're like the will-they-won't-they they relationship yep. of the show, basically. Yep. It's like it's going to be like seven seasons later, they're still trying to figure this out. No, no. <laughs> ne- like, they need to both be there for next season. Like, if this does not get wrapped up in the, the second part of this finale, which I don't think that it will, like, I don't know. It, this is like waiting between like best of both worlds um <laughs> for me because i just i wanted i want to see them together like i have been waiting for this it was a big part of what i looked forward to for season two and my heart is just so broken <laughs> um but i will say like i i have i have highly enjoyed getting to know Colbert more even though it has been a process of exp- um, exploring his his trauma and his PTSD, um, you know, for, for me, it's resonated a lot since I also have PTSD. So I guess we'll just see where they go. Um, but I, I, I think that's pretty much it then for uh, mm. play a new track. Did Got you have one anything more else? Thing. One, one more, more thing. Okay. And this is a very it. important thing for all Trekkies to know. Everybody, pay close attention. If you ever come across one. Just remember, time crystals only show you bad stuff. Don't ever grab a time crystal <laughs> thinking you're going to see a vision of yourself frolicking in a field with bunny rabbits and butterflies and rainbows because it ain't going to happen. You're just going to see pestilence and death and explosions and horrible, <laughs> terrible things. So don't touch them. Word I probably don't touch them. I would still shiny. touch it. It's shiny. I, I would touch, touch it. it. I asked, oh, well, I didn't really ask, but when I was live tweeting, I was like, man, with the minute that Burnham goes to touch it, I'm just like, would you do it? Would you take that risk and nope. and then deal with that? Because <laughs> you can see even in this episode that Pike like is still wrestling with it. There are just a couple times where like you can kind of see that in his eyes, um, especially kind of at the beginning of the episode and then at the end. Um man 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 all right well let's move into spin it again i've got a lot of really awesome stuff to talk about but i want to hear what thad has to say so thad what do you feel deserves a little extra attention another mention what's or something that maybe we haven't talked about yet well i can't mention the enterprise enough uh uh like for in all seriousness, when they walked out onto the Enterprise Bridge, I paused the screen and then just like stared at it, analyzing all the details for like five minutes. It just was amazing. Um, but not just that. The, the, there's a lot of stuff happening in this episode. Um, we should mention, because I don't think we have yet at all, the, the scene with between Burnham and Tyler. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> So, However you may feel about it, it's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going off to that spinoff. <laughs> I I really hope, look, I like Shazad Latif. I like looking at him. I, no, I like, <laughs> he's, <laughs> okay, yes. I will just objectify the bejesus out of him and his Kalesh. Um, I, I, look, I don't know why that turns me on, but for some reason that man's saying, like, that man's talking Klingon. Like, I don't know. I don't know, but... See, no, the fact that that, turn, that Klingon turns you on just means that you are a bona fide Trekkie. It's, it's, I, I have the Klingon forehead as well, so <laughs> I am... Okay, we'll leave that conversation there, but, look, I'm really... I I don't feel you know this is just another place where like I I don't feel that we really utilized Ash Tyler and everything that has happened to him in a way that completely honored that character um I feel like there could have been so much more done with him that really really didn't happen and may or may not happen should he move on to section 31 show 
Um, I am glad that this relationship is kind of coming to an end. Uh, it's not a great relationship for either of them to be in. However, aside from his Klingon rage on the bridge, when she mentioned she would be leaving and never coming back, uh, which I thought was a little extraneous. Um, I enjoyed the scene between them. And I think I said it, well, I wasn't here last week, so I might have said it on our second part of the women uh, about women representation and discovery. But uh, this relationship never felt desperate, if that makes sense. Like, Michael never goes back to him out of like the, like a desperation or like I have to have you I need you it's just you're a person that I've been close and shared this intimacy with and when I am hurting like I go to you because it's safe um despite what they've been through despite the fact that you know Ash's Vogue tried to kill her um she's obviously worked past that enough that that I I do I felt it was poignant and I, I liked the way that that wrapped up. So that's what I'll say about that. And if anybody else wants to throw in their two cents, please do. Oh, I've got four or five cents. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get blowback. Okay. If it's not it, but... Jeff, then let's just go to Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, um, on Ash and Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like the way they've dealt with this relationship in that they didn't just go back to the, oh, they're back together and they're in love and all that stuff. They were just kind of like, I almost felt like they've come to a place where uh, because of all the trauma that they've both been through that they can just, it's just kind of like they're almost like two best friends that mm -hmm. like they share that understanding and that uh, intimacy and that depth of like the emotions of everything so yeah. it's almost like they're kind of each other's safe space that like Michael can feel safe enough to vent against him you know a couple episodes ago and that he can feel safe to express all these other things so like I like the way that their relationship becomes almost this they're not romantic in that sense even though they love each other but it's almost like they've come to this a better understanding of like it's okay they don't have to be intimate they don't have to be like in love but they just kind of are there to kind of look out for each other which is yeah. really really nice like they're not even really they're not in an active relationship yeah it's they're just not. like <laughs> no it's just like but that's like you know the ex that you parted with that's still friends in your life and when you really need someone they're there although this is you know they make out so it's gone to a little <laughs> little more than that um but you know i we'll see what happens i think he was gonna go get the help of the klingons or something uh before he left the ship i thought it was adorable that tyler asked pike like does this mean you trust me now do you trust me dad <laughs> yeah, i do like um, i like that because it's like they've had that sort of back and forth with each other for like most of the season and it seemed like it kind of like was forgotten but it, it was nice that they kind of picked up at the end it was like no 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 they're at a place where they trust each other now too yeah so you know i hope he comes back in the second half i hope he brings laurel because i don't i hope we haven't seen the last of laurel um but thad did you have more for uh, spin it again. Um, probably that I'm not thinking <laughs> of at this exact moment. Uh, uh, did we know that Stamets had a sibling before? No, we didn't. Nope. Which I guess technically should have been not spin it again. <laughs> had a new one. track, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. Whatever. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> I yeah, like I said that. I, I like. How do I say this? Um, for me, and this is only for me, like this doesn't represent everybody. Obviously, people across the board have either, it's either been enough or it's not been enough this time with the characters. Uh, for me, I felt like the, the moments that we had with them sending their letters were basically on par with what I would expect from how much we know them. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really just a little peek and like poor old Shakun, like oh man, like I, knowing that she comes from a Luddite family and that you know she has gone off and done something that 
probably just got her disowned or rejected from her family. Like that was deep and hard. And I want to, I hope we, again, I just, I hope we get more, more stories uh, from these characters in next season, but yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling now. (laughs) All right. Um, Well then Belinda, what about you for spinning again? What deserves a little extra attention? Um, it's just any scenes with Poe, I feel like this episode. Yes. I just, I love that character and I love the sort of vibrant energy that she brings into the room. And I just I love that line where she's like, Oh, you know, the the, the good thing about being queen now is that, you know, I don't have to take snark from anyone. I made that into a lull. And I was like, <laughs> if I was a 17-year-old queen, I would have made that into a lull too. <laughs> So it was just like everything that she does is just like she's got such energy to her that like it just makes everything really bright and happy yeah. and like I just really love that character and I I don't know if she's still on that ship with them or if she's she left. I mean, she said she wasn't going anywhere, and then right, they, they so. confirmed, you know, <laughs> Saru said that she hadn't left, so I assume yeah, so that she's gonna be there. Like, I mean, if they want to take her into the future for season three, I'm all for it. She's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, it. I I absolutely adore everything about her. Everything about her and Tilly. Again, it's just another strong point where they are showing, you know, a, a positive relationship between women. <laughs> like, how many of my girlfriends have I, you know, been away from forever? And I see, like, I go to STLV, like people I see once a year and I sit there and squeal and jump and dance when I see them. And the whole moment where she came on the ship and and she's like, Pike addresses her. She's just like, and then like they have their thing. And then she meets, like she meets Pike last and Tilly's so adorable. with like, this is captain Pike. Yep. This is the captain. Uh, I love that moment with Michael where she's like, oh, you're shorter than yeah. I pictured. And Michael just had that look on her face like, wait, like, okay. And then she's like, thank you. <laughs> I think it's, I, I love, I really love the fact that like they, they make sure to highlight that she is so young because like one of the, one of the women on, on the, the women panel that I did or that I'm working on, um, Nina, she's, she's Freckle Master on Twitter. And and she's the same age. Like she's young. She's sixteen. And for her, like seeing all different ages of women, and and especially seeing these younger women in these like super super smart, like you know, she's a queen. Like just owning everything and being super confident is so so important um, for our kids. And I I love the fact that they have this character there um that is different from Tilly but then also balances Tilly and it's just really super fun yeah I I definitely think she's just really great (laughs) I hope we see more of her me too let's hope she's still on the ship all right (laughs) Jeff what what about you what stood out the most Mm, well I think my absolute favorite moment in this episode uh, was during the self-destruct sequence when Saru essentially personifies the discovery and, uh, you know, says she'll go with the dignity she deserves. I, one thing I love about Star Trek in general is the, the ship is a character. And I like the fact that it felt like an acknowledgement that yes, you know, we have this reverence and, and honor for the vessel that we're on and it's part of our lives and we're a part of it. And I, I kind of thought I just had a little moment of pride there, you know, knowing that they, you know, they, they value the ship and it's just as much a character on the show as, as everybody else is. So that was nice. It kind of harked me back to older Trek shows where, you know, the, the ship was like this central thing and there's always so much going on with the ship. And, you know, they get the Sh- big Shatner speeches about why they're on board the Enterprise and all like, a, you know, Picard speeches. And I kind of like that. It was a little moment, but I, I really like that. And that kind of also goes along with the another nod to the Captain Saru when everybody kind of looks looks knowingly at Saru when Pike says they need to choose a new captain and everybody like turns their head like, hmm, we know who he's talking about. 
man so like can like, i uh, we have more important things to talk about now <laughs> that moment though guys like discovery's gonna need a new captain and then boom and i'm like is it over like is that how this episode is ending and then it comes back <laughs> and then you don't even get the and i'm just like oh come on <laughs> like oh i it was so mean but i loved it so much <laughs> Like, it's just, I don't know. This episode was just a powerhouse episode for me. And, like, everything was amazing. So, yeah. yeah uh, I, like, I would okay. agree um, with that. I like that they set the self-destruct after everybody left, which which I felt like, it seemed like they always, like, set the self-destruct first. And then it's like, okay, everybody <laughs> get off the ship before this thing blows up. But here yeah. is like, no, 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 they've thought this through, you know? <laughs> like On that same vein, I like that they used handprint authentication for the self-destruct, which is a little more secure <laughs> yes. than zero, zero, zero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, zero, 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 one, seven, zero, one, or 13, or whatever our discovery number is. But yeah. yeah. The old 1, 1A, one 2B, 3C All right. sequence. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, are you going to mention... Spock and or Spock and Amanda and Sarek. Uh, I have uh, some notes in here about that, but I did like the uh, Sarek apologizing moment. Did not expect yeah. that. He has always been very stoic and defensive about his choices and you know raising the children. But um, I was glad to see that. That was a really nice send off moment. And he apologized to Amanda, Amanda. like, yep. hello, mm -hmm. like, that was <laughs> finally <laughs> so yeah, awesome. Culpa, yeah. A little overdue. And, yeah, and I mean, you know, we know now, like, it's it's Spock, you know, Spock wants the, the distance, and so it's kind of sad to go from this really hard, like, I cried, <laughs> like, I, I have felt kind of left out this season of Discovery because I haven't crying a lot um whereas some people are crying every episode and oh my gosh your poor hearts i need to hug you all um but i just i found that entire just oh man just her saying you know i was broken and you put me back together like yeah that was it definitely was, one of the things i cried at too oh it was just so so good um i really really enjoyed that scene so much so much. All right, Jeff, anything else? Mm, I was a little surprised to see that the time crystal worked for Burnham when she touched it. Because it, I thought the way that it was presented to Pike, it seemed like it was something that was now tied to him. So I didn't think in my mind that if somebody else touched it, does that mean that she's bound to it too? Or I'm not really sure. Well, ever, and Reno, right? So I think it's just that once, like, once a person touches it, it's going to show you your future. Mm. And what do you think everyone would want to flock to that that crystal and touch it? <laughs> like, how am I going to die? I want to know. <laughs> Maybe, I, but I, I mean, wouldn't be able to resist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, you know, Pike came back with it. Pike had the knowledge of what would happen when you touch it. Um, and I think I can't remember the exact dialogue in the scene where they're getting ready to load it up and and take it. And if he tells her there, like. I don't, what I'm saying is, I don't know if everyone had the the basic common knowledge of if you touch it, you will see things. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to know that, that it works, and it can work for multiple people. Yeah, because I thought, okay, well, you know, Burnham has seen her future, she's gonna, she's gonna go and try to change everything, and then we have Jet Reno, who sees the same exact you know the red wedding on discovery thing where that was well i'm like how are people not talking about the fact that we had to watch everybody die and how <laughs> terrible that was like i don't know i was it was rough to watch i thought it was but i find it interesting though that pike can't change his fate but the other ones can i don't know maybe well i think I mean, pike's thing is tied to the fact that he's the one who took the crystal away from the monastery hmm. and, and because they said that by taking a crystal from the monastery requires a great sacrifice so i think in order to take that crystal away the sacrifice right. is that you're doomed to that fate the others right. they didn't hmm. take the crystal away they were just kind of the ones it was like after everything that Pike had already done to sacrifice for it. So now the crystal is kind of just working normally, I guess. 
yeah. in that it's showing everybody's future, but they're not tied to the future okay. the way that Pike is. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That and really does. It does. Good explanation. Thank you. Clear it right up for me. <laughs> uh, and I have to. That's I why have we have make, guests. Uh, I have to make one mention of the score in this episode. I love that they weave some of the classic theme in there. Uh, it was very triumphant. And as Thad mentioned, some of the throwback sound effects were cool. The photon torpedo sound effects were really cool. So I was kind of geeking out. Uh, the console noises stuff. too. Yes. Oh, it, yeah. yeah. I love that they work all that stuff in there and do it in such a tasteful way. Like the, the way that the, the, the theme was soaring through those enterprise shots was really nice. I like the little whistle that they have right before they say captain on the bridge. Mm-hmm. And it's just that little, it, it's like, it's like going home. You know? <laughs> it's it is. is. And that's like, that's one of the big reasons that I love discovery. Like I love discovery and I love where it's been set in time. And it, those little connections are just so nostalgic. I mean, it's the same thing. Like when I walk into the Star Trek convention and I hear the music playing, <laughs> like there is just something so comforting about that, that it is, it's like your home. Um, you know, my heart. <laughs> I'm just I'm the heart eye emoji right now as usual <laughs> yeah. um so I am really excited that Nan is staying I am also really terrified that she's going to get killed oh my god I uh oh, yep. that, that goodbye scene with everybody though I I just it really like it really got me when he was saying goodbye to everyone yep and then, and then his moment, uh, Pike's moment with Spock, where he's just like, "There are, no <laughs> there words. are no words." <laughs> but like, he he kind of pats him on the arm the same way that when uh when they found Spock again, and he's like, "Welcome to Discovery," and he pats him on the arm, and I'm just like, it, like the like it almost just feels like you know these are these are his children, <laughs> you know, yeah. and he's just, it's so hard to let spock go out there by himself and yeah and yeah and and then that like when they stand up and say goodbye to him and it just i really i thought that moment was like he deserved that moment <laughs> it was very emotional oh, totally and I <laughs> totally but tilly wasn't totally. there and i felt sad about that that tilly didn't get to say goodbye oh <sighs> i think and I there was that, that tilly great scene with there, tilly but... and michael when when oh yeah this Michael, is enough yeah that was great that uh that's me and claire at stlb <laughs> like, <laughs> we really i think we had like one year where we said like the first year we met and we were saying bye and like we hugged and cried and then now it's just like we don't even really say goodbye we're just like yeah we'll yeah, see you next year whatever it's <laughs> it's just it's just been, it's been really great to see my life um, as a woman, my friend, my my friendships with other women be reflected in discovery in this way, um, and I'll I'll leave that at its short and simple bit, and then tell you to go listen to the women <laughs> panel <laughs> with ten women or however many women we had talking about it all there. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited. I really hope that Nan does stay. I think she was like just a boss, and I love her presence and I love her fashion. Uh, so I really hope that she sticks around. Uh, number one, like we have been waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> since the che- I have eaten, I've eaten like 50 cheeseburgers now. Um, <laughs> and so like, I look again, I just, I want to show with number one is captain and it's like the USS, the women, <laughs> and like on the bridge like I just loved you walk into the Enterprise bridge and there's Cornwell and number one and then the other lieutenant who I can't remember her name right now um, Amin, I think yes I'm in yes so there's like all these women on the bridge which is just so freaking awesome uh, so if number one gets her own show which I'm totally down with we have to actually give her a name yes I think and I'm maybe okay, she'll like still I like that so name. I think Una is a great name. Una I is think that great. That, I mean, I loved I it from the book. That. Yeah, I loved it from the books. I love it to honor Una McCormack. Like, she's yes. an amazing writer. Um, it. I absolutely loved that what we got from her in this episode was pretty much in line with what I expected. And that was for her to just have this super um, confident, oh, I need a, I need like a good, it's so hard to find the right word 
she's so efficient i feel like like she just gets stuff done yeah there's this yes. scene where, she, where she tells where she's like <laughs> that she had gotten the the special <laughs> fighters because she, yeah she commandeered the, the fighters <laughs> yeah in case the uh excrement hits the fan and <laughs> yes that was, that was like that was just such a great moment because like you know that's who she would be and pike was just like hell yes this woman's amazing <laughs> And I like that everybody else was like impressed too. Like Michael had like raised her eyebrow and even Giorgio was like, oh, this person's really good. Yeah. And like she she also wasn't afraid to just say, you know, I think what did she say? Like not to oh. It was where she was asking if my, Michael could even pilot the the Red Angel suit. And she's yeah. like, I don't know. The 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 way she said it, it was like, you know, can we even do this? But it wasn't in a way that was like snarky or anything. Um, and so I liked that. And I we're we're gonna get more of her in the second half of this two part finale. And I'm really curious to see where we go. But for, for me, like it hasn't been enough, but I had to just kind of come to the resolve. And I'm gonna read this tweet just because I said it better in a tweet than I can say it on here. Um, I was like, we haven't seen enough of her, but I can tell you that I see the resilience, confidence, and power of this woman in every woman Star Trek fan I know. Perhaps number one's greatest destiny isn't a tale of how she empowers us, but how we continue to embody her. Uh, I think she's just been this, this enigma of a strong woman character that we've a lot of women I know have just looked up to and, and, and many men and non-binary people I know have, have kind of said, yeah, we want to see more of her. Uh, so while it hasn't quite been enough for me, it's, it's been really great. And I do hope that we see more of her somewhere. Um, I just, ha <laughs> yeah, I just happened to like, as I was screenshotting everything, they were talk. I think they were talking about the ship, or they're talking about something. And they said, "We'll never see another like her." <laughs> and yeah. I think, I think that we have. I think that so many of the women in Star Trek have been reminiscent of of this character. Um, she was, you know, I wish she had actually been in TOS as number one, and not just a whisper of what could have been. But I think that Star Trek has done really good with honoring that tradition. And so I guess we'll see what happens and kind of go from there. But I don't know, Belinda, were you excited to have number one? Oh, yeah. I mean, my God, when they cast Rebecca Romaine, I was like, she's like, she's perfect for this. And we only got to see that very tiny glimpse of her um, earlier in the season. And I was just chomping at the bits for more because she's just like, she is this character whom like we know but we don't really know in canon yeah and there's so many things that they can do with her and even just from that very small tiny scene that they had at the, the earlier parts of the season it was just like you could see sort of this energy that she has and this confidence that she has that she's just like she knows what she has to do and she's gonna go and do it and I love like the strength that she projects without mm -hmm. having to be um, like outwardly in any sort of way. It's just like this natural confidence that she has that like, you know, it, it was just really nice. And then to see her come back and sort of be um, really awesome and getting things done and knowing exactly you know, and being able to anticipate the situation to like help their situation be better. It just like, it makes it makes me realize and really see just why she is such a good number one, because she just, she knows to anticipate things that her mm -hmm. captain's going to need. And I feel like that's what all number one needs to be. Like all yeah. first officers really need to be the one to kind of anticipate and be prepared for the things that their captain may or may not need. And, and, and I think number one and Pike has that relationship where, you know, she's kind of like the one where you know if something were to kind of uh fall by the wayside she's kind of just like grabs it all up and takes care of things and he clearly counts on her to take care of things and so mm -hmm. I just I like the way that that relationship is that you know he knows that she's awesome and she knows that she's awesome and everyone <laughs> knows that she's awesome I think at the end of the day I'll have to just reconcile Anson Mount's 
pike with the Jeffrey Hunter's misogynistic pike <laughs> um by he's just really intimidated at that point and that's why he yeah, can't get used to I, having these women on the bridge <laughs> i just i personally always have just kind of um because that was in the cage and not so much in the menagerie yeah, and, yeah. and so i've always just kind of excised that part out as like well it wasn't in the actual tos episode so it doesn't exist and it's a relic of a time where you know, horrible dialogue was written <laughs> for that sort yeah. of thing. So I just kind of pretend that that didn't exist. <laughs> that's, just, that's not, that, no, it's not, didn't happen. So it's not canon. And hey, we don't right. care about canon anyway. And yeah. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going to accept whatever the version that Anson Mount brings because that's who I think the Pike would have been. Yeah. Um, had he been written not with the sort of 1960s slightly uh, or very misogynistic <laughs> uh, yeah. tint to it and I think it's just I think the pike that we get now is the pike that I want to accept yes I think yeah, I think we're all there's a lot of that in that. TOS beyond the cage too so it's like I just like to pretend none of it happened <laughs> yeah. yep 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 all right well there's one more thing I want to talk about before we wrap things up and that is I guess really probably more like me asking your opinion or your speculation on how exactly this might tie into Calypso. Like we know the ship ends up abandoned for what almost a thousand years Zora has been just waiting. And so like at some point that is going to happen do we think this is just something that's going to happen after after they jump into the future and do whatever they need to do in season three? Or do we think that this will somehow get tied into the finale? I don't know. Thad, what do you think? I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, I think it could go either way. I think it could tie into the finale and then the finale could tie into Calypso. I've seen some theories that are saying that season three they're gonna be in the future and it's and it's gonna end tying it into calypso that's certainly possible if that does happen we're obviously gonna have to they're gonna have to find some reason for spock not to go with them mm -hmm. uh but I think spock I is on the shuttle in that right and see that's what i was gonna mention here in the trailer yeah we see spock in a shuttle with burnham so somehow something's gonna happen but it would not surprise me if the theory that, yeah, the season is going to end with them in the future. And how do you feel about the possibility of having Spock for third season or for really a second season for him, but in the third season? I uh, no, I <laughs> would prefer Spock be a one season thing. Uh, See ya, Spock. I, I've really enjoyed Ethan Beck as Spock, uh, but I want Discovery to be more of its own thing and not, yeah. yeah. Uh, and based on the fact that we had <laughs> the, the uh, cause this past week we had a picture surface because the Star Trek crews accidentally used a promotional picture that they weren't supposed to <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> of clean shaven Spock in the enterprise uniform. And it was very quickly taken down, and they even <laughs> asked everybody who who screenshot it to take it down too, because I I had put it up, and I was they yeah. DM'd me and asked me to take it down too. But it's out there. If you look for it, you can find it. Uh, and the fact that that exists tells me that that's what he that's what he's going to look like at the end of this season. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, what What about you, Jeff? I want to hear from you. Well, I, I think what I would say is going to repeat a lot of the things that Thad said, but I have a feeling that maybe end of the third season, or who knows, um, eventually, if they do go into the future, uh, it seems plausible to me that they'll, they'll find a way to get the crew back to the normal time, and the ship obviously can't come back, so it's going to have to stay there, because it's still got the, the sphere data and... You know, that has to stay in the future. So it, it seems like it ties in pretty well if that's the direction that it's going to go. 
um, which is kind of my theory at this point is, you know, yeah. we'll be in the, the future for season three and somehow they'll be able to get back. Um, they'll figure something out so that they're not tied to that timeline um, and bring her mom back to, of course. Um, yeah. I mean, it seems perfectly logical. Yeah. What about you, Belinda? Um, I was actually thinking that maybe they don't somehow end up in the future but what if they ended up in like the past or something um because like when 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 we get to calypso um zora says that she's been waiting there for a thousand years if they if the crew ends up in the future then how was zora waiting there for a thousand years you know like i feel like uh, a bit of that like the timeline math doesn't quite mm -hmm. add up um because if she's been waiting for a thousand years since you know the the discovery era then it doesn't quite make sense for the discovery crew to end up in the future and leave the ship there because then it wouldn't be a thousand years it would be like one year you know and and so I don't know if they end up in the future or it's some sort of timeline reset or maybe what they end up having to do is uh, the ship somehow ends up staying stuck in some nebula somewhere and then the crew themselves end up getting dragged to the future without the ship or something like that. I, it I would, don't know. <laughs> I think it would be interesting if they do jump into the future or the just the ship itself gets sent into the future. I mean, you know, she doesn't specify what happened. She just said she had orders you know, not to go anywhere. Right, but, but she does say that she's been waiting there for a thousand right. years. Right, but so, that doesn't mean that she's not 2,000 years in the future. Yeah, I think that, like, well, they didn't, can... Didn't even the if promo they, said that it was a thousand years later? When they when they were showing the promos for Calypso, it says a thousand years after Discovery. I'm not sure how much we can... So, how much we can say from a promo is canon if it's not actually said in the actual episode you're right though i think it did say that it did um i was trying to figure out like i guess if it was post nemesis then it would be not far n too far like i don't know i was trying to figure out timeline stuff and when everything happens that's a I, 100 that's about 100 years right yeah but, but like yeah if she if she goes if the ship is a thousand years after discovery like wouldn't that still be post everything like everything that we know in star trek oh would have yeah long after after. yeah way long so, it's like the three thousands <laughs> I, yeah i still feel like we could jump into the future with the ship and with the discovery crew that we were shown to be staying with the ship and then they're they're in that post nemesis future doing whatever for a while and the ship still winds up being abandoned at some point um and now... i mean again i it, oh i'm sorry if we're, I guess, I guess it just comes down to that specification of it, of it being, is it a thousand? I mean, I don't know. Even if it's a thousand years since the time of discovery, it would still be far enough in the future to be post nemesis. Oh, long post nemesis. Yeah, like nine hundred years after nemesis. So, like, I, I'm either seeing that they go into the future, they're post nemesis, they're on the ship, and then something down the road you know further happens and the ship gets abandoned and that's where it ends up in calypso or something happens and they just send the ship way far into the future like they've been talking about um but the crew like they don't send the crew with it i'm not sure i think there are basically like a few options as to how it could happen I really want to see them go post nemesis and just do this entirely different crazy thing because I think it's just awesome. Uh, they run into Picard. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. I don't know. Like here, you know, here I you know, they they ran into Pike and Spock and that worked out pretty well, I think. 
So I don't want to sit here and judge and say, I don't want them to jump into the future and, oh, there's Picard. And no, oh, this is weird because who, who knows? Like, it'll, it'll be great, right? I have faith in, in what these writers and creatives are doing. So I think it'll be fun. I just, I don't quite know. And I, 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 but I feel like one of those things, like, I feel like we have to go into the future to have a season three, right? Like, I don't, yeah, I don't I know so. <laughs> how we can stay in the current timeline with the ship, with everything going on with control. I just, I feel like it's going to happen, but based on, Reno's revelation and Burnham's revelation of the future I'm just really curious like how much is going to play out I don't believe that the whole crew is going to die no. so I do think something will change but like you, you guys get like why I'm so excited though right because I don't know oh, yeah. any of this yeah stuff. I, I like that it's uh, gotten it's very unpredictable like there's sort of like five six different ways that this could go about there it's just been great and like even the things that people have sort of kind of figured out here and there have actually not been what they thought like with burnham being the red angel like yes she is in some respect but that wasn't actually the big reveal like it's just a, a very different viewer experience than last season and it's just <laughs> Like I struggled. I the I the first you know first episode was okay. I, I I said this already in a previous episode, but it's like New Eden was great, and then Point of Light I was like eh, and then even like Oval for Charon, like it that one wasn't as impacting for me as it was for others. But somewhere in all this, it just took off for me. And even though like yes, there's a lot going on, and yes, I would have liked to have seen more of this and less of that and everything else. I'm just like, I'm really glad to be living in a time where I get to sit down on Thursday night. And even though I'm not watching it live, I'm watching it several hours after everyone else and I have to stay off of social media. <laughs> <laughs> I like sitting there, going on the Enterprise, knowing that in the same time frame, all my friends across the world are sitting there having like a trekkie orgasm <laughs> like, <laughs> like it really like there is just i know like m most of my friends i know there are a lot of people out there that aren't loving it and everything else but just knowing that i'm able to sit there and be giddy and know that so many so many other people out there are sharing that giddiness and sharing on that adventure is just something really special and it's that's not something that i got with enterprise you know, aside from Enterprise just not being my trek, um, it's just something really special for Discovery, and and I love it. And I'll just stop gushing. It's like I'm vomiting rainbows into our podcast. <laughs> we love All right. <laughs> All right. So I guess we'll go around um, the table, and we'll do just final thoughts on the episode, and I guess maybe what if you're looking forward to seeing anything from the finale um, and then where we can find you on social media, we'll all get it done in one big thing. So I'm going to give it to Thad go. All right. Well, uh, my final, my big final thought is that I can't wait to see the next episode. Uh, I want to know how they're going to tie everything up. I have some ideas, but they're probably all wrong. So I'm just loving to see what's going to happen. Um, and then where can we find you on social media? Okay, the uh, best place to find me is on Twitter. I am at Tyrannicus. That's T-Y-R-A-N-I-C-U-S. You can also check out my two podcasts, uh, Delta Flyer, which is a Voyager rewatch episode or series. We just finished uh, season two of Voyager. Uh, you can find that on any podcast player you want. And then the other one is Stargate Weekly, which is the same thing, but for Stargate SG-1, where we are almost done with season three. Woohoo, you are just chugging along. And one day when I get back into my Voyager rewatch, I will have to do a watch and listen at the same time, because that's We'd the way to, to do it. We'd sometime. No, well, I might have to do that too. I am currently out of spoons for <laughs> doing much else. Um, but yeah, we'll be open to that. 
Um, and Belinda, what about you? Final thoughts and where we can find you in social media land. Um, final thoughts is just I've been loving the season and I'm really excited for uh, the final episode, even though I'm kind of dreading it because I don't want it to end. Yeah. Um, and and it's just uh, for me personally, the season has just been really, really special because as a little kid, I I remember watching the Menagerie when I was very young and I was fascinated by Captain Pike and he was always uh, at the top of my list about uh, favorite uh, Star Trek characters of all time because I just I love background characters so much that like they always become my number one and so to actually I mean I've never thought in a million years we'd actually get a Captain Pike to like appear on any sort of Star Trek show so I just kind of put it out of my mind so uh, what Discovery has given me this season is just, it's something really special that I've wanted since I was nine years old. So mm -hmm. um, it, so to have uh, Pike and then to have this beautiful season, it's, uh, it's just very, very special to me. And um, I, I've just, uh, I couldn't be more thankful for Discovery for doing this and, uh, and for Anson Mount, who is really amazing in the role. And um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> everyone can find me on Twitter at uh, Beta Artemis, B-E-T-A-A-R-T-E-M-I-S. And I'll probably be just gushing about Star Trek and Stargate because uh, that's also something I loved as a kid. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I, I love when other people love the things I love and I love to talk so that, yeah, this has been great. You're awesome. All right, Jeff, what about you? Final thoughts and where, where can we find you in social media land? Um, I'll just say I'm looking forward to seeing how things play out next Thursday and being back here to talk about it on the following Sunday. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Warp Factor Jeff, and you can also find me sometimes hanging around in the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas convention group on Facebook. Yep, yep. So yeah, I think I said enough about all the things I am excited about for the show. Uh, I, yeah, no idea where we're going. I'm so excited to see and find out and see how this ends and come back and, and talk about it all next week. Um, you can find me at LLA Posper on Twitter. And then also at Oh My Starships is where I post spoilery stuff after the episodes come out uh, so that I don't spoil it for everyone else. Um, we are at Disco underscore Trek. Make sure that you either follow us there or you find our Disco Trek page on Facebook or you go to the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas convention and join there. There, of course, is the very basic option of just going to the website and finding the contact form under the Disco Trek page. It's discotrek.thetricordertransmissions.com. Uh, just fill out that form for your chance to be on the show. And uh, Patreon is patreon.com slash thetricordertransmissions. We will be gearing up for STLV as we end our season of Discovery. So um, we're hoping to get to see a lot of people there. We're going to be planning our birthday party, our Tricorder Transmissions birthday. And then we have a special event um, for some of our high-ranking patrons over I'm looking at forward Patreon. To that. Yes, that is one of them. Uh, so I guess we will anxiously await we, at least we're at sunday so four more days until we watch it and then just a few more days to talk about it uh until then thank you both for joining us it's been a pleasure having you back thad and it's been great getting to know you belinda i followed you on twitter so i hope we can be friends now and Yay. gush over discovery <laughs> absolutely <laughs> all right well everybody we will see you next time live long and prosper mm -hmm.